Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discovering what is the most Earth-like object in our solar system except for, of course, our planet Earth. What other object resembles Earth in a lot of different ways? Welcome to What The Math. So on our quest to find the most Earth-like object in our solar system, we actually have to consider a few things, but most importantly we have to try to think a little bit outside of the box. A lot of the planets in our solar system already kind of don't meet the Earth-like qualification. The gas giants. There is almost no way we can actually potentially live on a gas giant because they don't really have solid surface until you reach much much deeper depths where it's very difficult to survive. So these objects are kind of out. Now what about planets? Well we have these four terrestrial planets to choose from and I guess most people almost right away consider Mars to be that one object in space that we might call home one day. Well it's actually not really correct. As a matter of fact Mars is not the most Earth-like planet or object, I should say, in our solar system. Let's take a look at the most Earth-like object and let's discuss why it is so. The object I'm talking about is this. You may have already guessed what it is, you may know just from the appearance, or you may have never heard of it before. This is actually a moon. It's a moon of Saturn known as Titan. And I'm going to give you several reasons why today modern scientists believe that this is literally as Earth-like as it gets in our solar system. Starting with the interesting discovery of 2018 that apparently this is the third object we discovered in our solar system that has dust storms. Yes, we've heard of dust storms on Mars. They actually very recently disabled one of the uh, rovers there. And we obviously know that there are, there are quite a lot of dust storms on our own planet. But here they also well, not they, but it also has dust storms based on organic molecules. And these dust storms were only recently discovered and uh, they were discovered by looking at basically uh, photos of Titan from several different um, time periods. And what it looked like was this. So this is actually the more recent discovery that just like Mars and just like Earth, Titan also seems to have these really interesting phenomena known as dust storms. Although these periodic dust storms, unlike the ones on our own planet, and this is actually coming from Institut de Physique uh, du Globe de Paris, um, and actually a few other laboratories, including a lot of uh, laboratories associated with the European Space Agency. But basically the discovery is that Titan experiences these dust storms and they seem to be more or less based on various organic molecules that are actually uh, behaving in a similar way that sand and dust behaves on Earth. That's actually kind of interesting. But what else makes this object so Earth-like? Well, it's of course the atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure here is actually higher than it is on Earth. Um, it's up to about 1.6 atmospheres, meaning that you can pretty much stand on the surface and not worry about being in some way killed by the lack of atmospheric pressure. You might die from other things like for example extreme cold or lack of oxygen, but definitely not from pressure. And this is what makes this object so interesting. It's the only other object that has actual significant atmosphere here for humans to actually pretty easily walk on the surface. but. More so, because of the low gravity, you could potentially even fly here if you basically attach little wings to your hands. That's kind of cool when you think about it. On top of this, uh, Titan also seems to have what's known as the um, ocean level. Basically, there's a global level of liquid, very similar to how we have ocean or sea level on the planet Earth. So here, if I were to actually remove the atmosphere and look underneath, I would find various amounts of liquid hydrocarbons, for example, uh, methane and ethane. And all of this, all of these lakes and all of this ocean is sort of more or less connected underneath the surface. And what is the surface made out of? Well, it's actually water. 
frozen water specifically. Basically super super hard um, ice that acts kind of like rock does on the planet Earth. So these hydrocarbon lakes on Titan are flowing around and actually are communicating with one another on the subsurface level, which suggests that uh, there could actually be more liquid hydrocarbon on Titan than we thought previously because a lot of it might be underneath the ice. So all of this makes this even more Earth-like than we previously thought. And speaking of lakes and oceans, well, just like Earth, Titan also has hydrological cycle of evaporation, precipitation, or basically rain and snow, and gas form of various hydrocarbons. So, for example, um, ethane and methane and various hydrocarbons can basically act in the same way that water does on Earth, and in that way, you can potentially have some sort of a very unusual um, hydrocarbon-based life, just like we have water-based life on Earth. Now, this beautiful moon also has volcanoes just like um, our own planet, but here the volcanoes are, once again, very different. They're basically cryovolcanoes. They're based on ejections of various cold slurries of water ice and ammonia. So it's not really magma, but it's liquid water and liquid ammonia. And just like on Earth, we also have dunes here. Dunes formed by various cold winds and mountain ranges, but once again made out of basically water ice. And we've actually seen these dunes uh, during the Cassini mission. There were quite a lot of photos that were taken, indicating that just like on Earth and deserts of Earth, we have unusual deserts of, well, essentially water ice here on Titan. We've also discovered quite a lot of organic molecules and active prebiotic uh, chemistry here, indicating that there's actually a lot of material here that could potentially create life. And this in itself is a tremendous discovery. There's also unusual uh, formations of methane clouds that have not been explained yet. And normally these on Earth indicate life as well. And so, all in all, Titan is extremely dynamic. There is a lot of stuff going on here, dynamic climate, organic molecules, active chemistry, liquid bodies of water, um, nitrogen-rich atmosphere, very similar to the atmosphere of Earth, although missing oxygen, of course, and things like dunes, wind, dust storms, and so on and so forth. So, all in all, this is a very, very Earth-like world. As a matter of fact, in terms of the actual activity on the surface and, well, really various dynamic uh, events happening on the surface, Titan is a lot more Earth-like than Mars is. If this world was a lot closer to the Sun and if it wasn't really um, that cold, it would have been most likely a water world and potentially a much better colony for humans than Mars. But obviously Titan is not, is not perfect. It only receives about 1% of the sunlight um, compared to Earth and around 50 times less sunlight than Mars does. And at the same time, the actual hazy atmosphere means that the world itself is very, very dark and extremely cold. So it's one of the coldest um, objects and one of the coldest places in our solar system. On top of this, despite all of these uh, cycles, like for example, the liquid cycle, it's not really water that's doing all of this, it's hydrocarbons. So in that sense, not really that hospitable to humans, because we're not going to be able to survive on this world. Mars, however, might have liquid water, and we've already discovered some signs underneath the um, caps of Mars, and also underground lakes. But nevertheless, Titan is definitely, at least uh, theoretically, the most Earth-like object in our solar system, and it's definitely worth exploring a little bit more. We definitely need to launch another mission here. We need to land here and we need to go and colonize this object. But in the next video, I'm going to explore this object a little bit more and tell you why it's actually kind of difficult. Colonizing Titan and other objects farther away than Jupiter is going to be quite a challenge. But you're going to find out about this tomorrow. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do subscribe and click that bell button to be notified about future videos. And also maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me tremendously. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.